In 2050, I envision Indonesia as a country that is advanced and also modern in technology, while also being able to maintain the natural resources and the diversity of our nation, ensuring our future generation a sustainable living environment. And in approximately 30 years from now, environmental defenders become the people who lead the country. They take up the positions of decision maker and also become the heart of the process of policy making that affect people's lives and also their own lives. And finally, I would like to see that the attention of saving and protecting the environment as well as protecting the people who fight for environment are heightened, especially within the younger generation. As a human rights defender and also public interest lawyer, I'm keen to see changes in terms of structure and also the system. If we advocate case-per-case -case basis without eliminating the root cause of the problems which are usually the system itself, then we cannot guarantee that the same problem might not occur in the future mainly working to improve the state-based protection in terms of changing the national level regulation to acknowledge human rights defenders and provide protection for them. While at the same time, I'm also working to increase the capacity of local human rights defenders to be able to advocate safely. I'm born as an ethnic minority in Indonesia. I'm Chinese Indonesian. I've first-handedly experienced being discriminated ever since I was a kid, up even on, until today, at times. I still remember vividly back in 1998, when Indonesia was in a dictatorial regime. My house was being attacked by unidentified people. They were throwing stones, trying to break the window of my house. They were screaming racial slurs and they threatened to, to kill my family and the people who share the same ethnicities with I am. Together with my family, we went to uh, a shelter, but it was a very traumatizing experience. I think it was definitely a defining moment for me because whenever I meet with a client, whenever I meet with the, um, with the victims of human rights violation, I shared the same experience. This, the same feeling and also burden because I've been in their shoes and I know how, how it feels um, when your rights is being taken away from you. So, uh, so I really want to create changes together with them. I definitely had the experience of being attacked, harassed and intimidated because of my work be it conducted by state actors or non-state actors. In the country where your freedom is being restricted, I was once attacked inside of a police headquarters because I demanded to meet my client who was being interrogated without the presence of a lawyer. I've experienced uh, my phone, uh, an attempt to hack my phone, my social media and emails. I've received anonymous calls from people, especially when I was being involved in a certain demonstration that advocate for a uh, sensitive issue, for example, like anti-corruption and also human trafficking. Um, and I know that these kind of attacks are very apparent and being experienced by a lot of defenders across Indonesia. I think the way that we can improve this situation is, of course, first of all, the state has to adhere to their responsibilities as a state to provide the protection for the people. So the changes of regulation to acknowledge and also to provide protection for human rights defenders and also starting forward with eliminating and also erasing the laws that are discriminating uh, minorities. Indonesia is currently undergoing a regression of democracy that can be seen by the enactment of various problematic laws, as well as the increase of criminalizations of human rights defenders. The UN has the power, capacity and also resource to create systemic changes. 
but one of the problems is that Indonesian defenders do not know how to effectively engage with you. Therefore, I would like to hope that you can improve your accessibility for Indonesian human rights defenders in particular. As for international community, I would like to request your continuous attention on the situation at the ground. For example, our COVID responses and how the government of Indonesia is disregarding the human rights perspective as well as the protection of our environment because they are solely focusing on the investment and economic growth. Thank you.